Hello, I'm Craig Constantine. Hello, Craig. I'm Claudia Belandia. Excited to be here. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you for joining me. Thank you for making the time. I, I always, it never ceases to amaze me how when we get into a Zoom call, like anybody, we get into a Zoom call, we just completely forget about how far apart we are, right? So like there happens to be a clock in the background where you are. And I keep looking at the clock and I keep thinking, I have to remember that I have an interview today at 3 p.m., except that that's now and it's only <laughs> one, you know, so like it, it's you two hours away and that's a significant distance, right? You picture the earth and there's only 24 time zones around it. So I just love how, not so much like how Zoom per se, but how the internet makes it so easy. You know, mm -hmm. even though we do have technical problems, we had a tech problem today. But I just love how, I don't know, I'm, I'm having this vision of like a roller derby, you know, with just chaos and people skating around and going the wrong way. And there's just all these collisions that are happening. And uh, before we press record, we do a little conversation, a little, little like, what are we going to talk about? And you had brought up the idea about creation. Mm -hmm. And you particularly were talking about how you love the flow of the conversations that come up, how there's yeah. a creative energy that happens when you get someone on the show. And I'm wondering, when you set out to start your podcast show, did you know that that was going to be the piece of it that seemed so important to you, the, the idea of creation and flow? Did you know that that was something you were going to be getting for yourself when you were when you like started the podcast? Uh, yes, yes. Actually, the idea of uh, my podcast called The Art of Living, it came from uh, conversations, insightful conversations that we were having. I was having with my friend when we were going hiking or walking, having coffees. And then I thought, hey, hey, well, we don't start recording our conversations because it was this beautiful flow and insights that we were having through our own lives and what we were learning uh, through our yeah, through our journey. So that's how the idea came. And then after that, the podcast started to evolve into, yeah, let's bring other guests and bring guests that we can learn from them and the journey in that way as well, bring value to our listeners through their own journey. And also we learn and, and as well, my clients, because as I work as a coach, as a conscious leadership coach as well can benefit when they are listening to to my podcast so the intention of the podcast was always just less things to flow let's allow the creativity to flow through us so in that way sometimes when we are so focused on our mind about what is next what's going to be said next and planning ahead uh, we close ourselves to the possibility of allow a uh, further insights that uh, can be more coming from more uh, uh, a deeper place more wisdom that, that can, can bring more light to, to the conversation. There are so many ways that um, in, in previous episodes of this show, I, I talked to people about the power that the host has because unless you're lucky to get like a real, a guest who's really playful, the guests tend to defer. Like what does the host want to ask next? Where does the host want to go with the conversation? Mm -hmm. So the host has that power. The host obviously has the editorial power. You can edit or you can choose not to edit. And I'm wondering if you've noticed any difference when you had those conversations with your friends, when you transitioned from just the spontaneous conversations, which were probably always outdoors, when you transition to doing them indoors, did you notice a change based on the environment? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it was fascinating to observe me through this process because even though we talk about her, we talk about it with my friend Kenda, she's the co-host, about the difference when we press recording and it's something on our subconscious that is like, start like the, the inner conversation. So I want to look good. What did I say? It's going to sound good. So what people will think. So it was fascinating to, to observe uh, at the beginning. But then once the awareness came through our life, when we, through our own observation, because I'm passionate about personal expansion and personal development. So I love to observe myself. So when I was looking at those thoughts, oh, interesting that was coming. But with that, my awareness, I was able to move them and let them go because it was not about me. 
It was not about, it's about the creation that wants to come through me, the experience that, that I desire to, to give to our listeners to. So once that awareness was gone, the conversation now starts flows with more ease. And, and for me, I'm very open and vulnerable through my conversations. And it's nothing that I feel that I don't want to say or not. It just kind of openly just goes now, as you were saying at the beginning of our conversation, of just having the Zoom where we record and seeing her, it's just, or seeing our guests, it feels like we are having a conversation together and we are learning and creating, co-creating in this, in this episode, whatever we're recording. I love the, I love the word that you chose co-creating because it's, it's a, I was gonna say, it's a special case, like special in the sense of it's really magical when it happens, not special, like it's extremely rare. Um, it's really magical when you encounter someone else who sees things differently or you know, you don't agree with them on some important topic, but yet they're still willing to, to like, you know, get in the space and, and co-create. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm wondering if you've found, are there things that you do to try and like prepare, like prepare the, the battle arena? In other words, you know, do you do things to, to try and get them to show up in the right mindset? Or do you do things to, uh, not bait and switch, but like sometimes I've had guests who, who really want all the questions up front and I'll send them questions yeah. which have nothing to do yeah. with what I'm expecting we'll talk about. You know, it's just like, well, here, have, yeah. have a pacifier, you know? So I'm just wondering, do you do things that are sort of outside the frame of what is ultimately heard in the podcast to uh, help create the space that you want? Uh, no, not really. Like for me, it's more the intention that we create. And one of the things that I tell my guests is that we are recording that we are not editing. That is that we allow things to flow as they come. And just to, and then I truly believe that it's me and Kenda who, who are creating this space for the guests to feel comfortable having a conversation with us. Mm -hmm. So it's for me in my preparation before the podcast or before the episode that we are recording. So what I, what I like to do is, yes, I will prepare about the person that I will, I will be interviewing. I will, uh, we normally interview uh, people who have, are authors. I am author myself. I wrote a book called Wake Up, uh, How to Get Out of Your Mind and Stop Being Out of Pile and Start Choosing Your Best Life. So because of that, I like to interview authors because I do believe, because my own experience that, that when we take the time to create a book or it's because we are very passionate about sharing our history, sharing our own life, and we are passionate about what we do. So that's what is my, my intention when it comes to, to interviewing authors. So I will go to Amazon or where they put their books or their websites to understand more about them and see uh, where we're going to go a little bit. I have a, a vision of where I would like to discuss with them. But the rest is just gonna a journey through the through the podcast to see where the things evolve. So uh, to answer your question, so for me, my preparation is that one, and also I meditate. I take five ten minutes before the episode recording to center myself, to put an intention that everything that is being said it comes from the highest good of everyone, every one of our listeners that they they the conversation will reach those ones who are listening that needs to listen our conversation and i say i love the universe i love the divine guy or divine light the god the spirit whatever you want to call it to speak through me and through those ones who are in this in this line so just i, I like to create that intention of the space of where we're going to have the conversation and then uh, we talk a little bit with kenda before we start the recording about just kind of setting the scene. We both meditate because I know she centered herself too. And then we create the, the, the space uh, for our conversation. Hmm. Intention is, it's one of those, it's like the salt. If you forget to put that in the recipe, it's like, oh, that's missing. Like some things, if you leave them out, you're like, what's missing? Then I'm like, but if, if you go in, with the wrong intention, or if you haven't intentionally like settled on one, that is, mm -hmm. is like a glaring, like it really shows up as something that's missing. Yeah. And do you find that, do you think you can tell when a guest shows up 
with an intention that aligns with yours versus when their intention is, is like missile and off like the word is misaligned or, you know, you were thinking my intention is to do this and their intention is to like sell their TV show. You know, like, do you find <laughs> that you can tell when their intention is aligned with yours? Uh, I, because I like to set intention when we talk and when we, before we start recording, I enjoy saying, okay, the intention is to, to speak and, to allow the universe to speak through us. I kind of said it aloud before we start recording. And then, and also let it flow. I have had guests that can be very straight and I accept them as they are. And I, I, I enjoy watching them and observing them. And, and also then I have conversations. I, I, of course, I have asked, asked questions about the topics and, and, and I have noticed that uh, it's me who as well managed the, the, the energy in the room right so is that that as well is important for me to just make sure that my intention is clear so in that way I can bring that energy through our conversation mm-hmm. and and then let it flow from there so and then I adapt to to what comes up because as you were saying yeah different people have different intentions and it's totally fair all of us do but then it's about a like swimming or coast like no the word that I'm looking is navigating through the through the experience of the the recording i'm having a vision of if you've ever run through the woods just like not on a trail but just literally tried to run through the woods you really can't spend a ton of time looking at the other people who are also running through the woods you need to spend time (laughs) looking down looking up looking for tree branches but all the while you're aware of the other people who are in the space with you and the way that you're describing that the evolution of the intention like in the flow of the conversation the way you're describing that reminds me of two people doing something together almost like um it's not quite partner dance but like two people dancing uh and they're they're listening to the same music or if you've ever seen um i've never seen one in person but i've seen them in movies and tv you've ever seen a silent dance party where they give everybody headphones and oh. all, all the people in the room are on, you know, Bluetooth headsets. So if you walk into the room, it's dead quiet. There's no sound at all, but everybody is dancing and it's patently clear that they are all hearing the same thing. And you can tell the energy that they are emoting, that they're, you know, they are, they're putting off a certain kind of energy, which reflects what they're listening to, even though each person has their different take on it. So the way you're describing flow and conversation reminds me of these other shared experiences that I've either directly experienced or seen, you know, visually. Um, I just think it's a neat, a neat way to I, look I, at I making love, an episode. I really love, I love your visual because I saw it like, oh, yeah, I love that visual of like, uh, is that, is this music playing that we come into the conversation and all of us dancing the way that we both all of our together dancing and enjoying the experience. Right. <laughs> I love it. I'm assuming they're listening to good music. I have no idea what they're actually listening to. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know about that. I had no idea about that, but I actually feel that kind of cool to observe too. <laughs> oh, it's neat. Yeah. And of course the, the, one of the big advantages of it is that it doesn't make noise in the real world. So you can have that dance party anywhere and it doesn't make any sound, doesn't disturb people who aren't at the party. Cool. Uh, and also the other huge, this so off on a tangent about that, let's see if I can figure out how to connect this to podcasting. One of the other magical things about that is if you want to have a conversation with a person, you just take your headphones off and the room is quiet. So it could be like, oh, hey, nice to meet you. You know, like you can just, you can just exit the space and talk to the person. Um, so I guess my question related to podcasting would be, yeah. have there you, is a connection there. Well, yeah, the connection I'm thinking of is what <laughs> happens at the end, right? So what do you, this is the connection I'm thinking is, have you, have you ever observed or thought about other differences between your experience with the guest when you look at before you record and after you record? So it's, you have the very small window of time when you're actually co-creating that flow and then can you see a difference in the relationship or in the yeah no interaction? not really not really what you were saying actually the connection that that it came to me when you were sharing that is about the connection is the presence being so present in the conversation it's like a, you're removing your headphones in order to be present with the with a with the interviewer with the people that we're having as a guest because if you are if you are not so far where you you are so 
like perhaps the conversation is not going where you wanted or the person is acting in the way that you didn't desire or something if you if you allow your mind to go with thoughts mm. that you're being distracted and then you are not being in tune in the conversation so being present so it's kind of removing the headphones it's removing the noise that it can be clouding your mind you know allowing you to be 100 present in the in the conversation with the guest so very very aware that just gonna tune it out and just be there present with them in the end then it's when you are able to see that co-creation that magic happen hmm. yeah that's a better connection than the one i was thinking of <laughs> i definitely <laughs> like that idea i also love that it's it's upside down. Like podcasters, we're always putting our headphones on and that's how I signal I'm really listening Like, because these are isolating so I can't hear anything other than what I hear in the digital transfer here <laughs> and, in, and in the visual of the silent dance party, you're taking your headphones off, which is like backwards. But, uh, <laughs> Interesting. <I'm, laughs> I love, I don't know, I'm just, I love visuals. I've always loved film um, and television, any kind of moving. It's just, I love that. Um, yeah. Uh, I had another question, but I'm just wondering if there are any questions that you had on your way here today, like that you're, you know, related to the the podcast world. Like, yeah. uh, I was very curious and excited about where our conversation will go with podcasts, because for me, podcasting has been a, a journey. Uh, we are coming up to our first year of launching in the next month. Congratulations. So, yeah, so it has been uh, a beautiful journey. I, the all the all that I have grown through the experience has been beautiful. The connection with my with my friend too, and learning and through with the guest with the guests and new awareness are coming and little clicks here and there. So <laughs> and really the other part is the, that I have learn through these journeys too that someone is always listened and that's something that is resonating with me so much because sometimes you can say okay how many downloads or how many people listen to this episode or no people actually are really listening and and then you can but for me even though that those thoughts sometimes were on my mind and I observe them for me, it, was, it doesn't is if it's just one person is listening is someone listening an episode that connect the dots so something click a new insight something is fully worth it so so for me that's kind of it's just aligned to the intention which i created my podcast from the beginning that that is for those ones who are ready to listen to what we are speaking and so that so that journey for me from day one year has been that like uh, reconnecting and just reminding me that People are listening. People, for those ones who are listening to this podcast, right. is that if they are you having a podcast, people are listening. Like uh, even if it's one person, like uh, just do it with love and and the intentions in alignment with your highest truth and 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 the people with, that are ready to listen to you that will be tuning in. The universe will put them there somehow, somewhere. <laughs> I I completely agree. I. How about I'm gonna give you like give you a hard question because I really think your what you were your your point you were just making about it, it's very close to what I sometimes talk about for my shows which is what's the definition of success like why am I doing this do I want two downloads or do I want two people to be more able to talk to the guests if they were to encounter them in real life the latter is my definition of success mm -hmm. so my harder question for you is do you have like a definition of success for what would be like okay uh, this this is i'm done like i've the, the podcast has achieved the thing that i set out to achieve like how would you know when to stop for me it's more to be in alignment success for me is more am i being in my alignment am i speaking my truth and following my heart and if i feel in alignment that for me is success and and for me right now uh it's, it's interesting though because in our society we have been conditioned to measure our success by the stereo world right like am i having 10 10 downloads 100 downloads a thousand hundred just put a name so we are so focused 
we have been conditioned to focus so much in the external world we are not as focused in how we feel as we do the podcasting in this case because it's the subject that we're talking but if we are doing our podcast and we feel so happy recording editing inviting guests and and we are so joyful in the journey and in the process can we not be that enough being success and then everything just becomes the the icing in the cake or mm. the the cherry in the top of the cake that oh hundred people just ask for the awesome it's just kind of like your heart like really like a, i got thousand downloads i don't know like a, a month ago we're like with my friend we were like what <laughs> <laughs> seriously like this and we were like oh wow that's so but for us it's like are we having fun are we enjoying are we still seeing alignment are we fun our heart that doesn't become like a, a chore like it's hard like it's resisting it so for me, that's my, more the definition for me of success. I think that's a great definition of success. Also, mm -hmm. no mention of ever stopping, which I think is great too. So, I, I, But I know what you mean. Um, well, Claudia, as much as I hate to say it, I think that's a great place to stop. So let's <laughs> call it a day. It doesn't have to be our only conversation. As I said before, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. Yeah, that was fantastic. I really enjoy our conversation. So anytime I'm here, I love, I love to talk. <laughs>